She's known as the Peace Prophet. And if anybody around here has, let me give this a little show of hands. Who's been, who's taken the Metro train uptown? Okay. Um, Dimes to Donuts, you have passed her and didn't know it. Okay. She goes by the Peace Prophet. She is very, very guarded and very, very private. I do have a photograph of her here, and you can't really see her face, which I think is what she would would want to respect her identity. But this is who she is. This is what you will see if you spot her. And I'll have it here for you to look at um, if you want to come and sign the book. She's um, she's kind of a mystery. Um, you've probably blinked past her and not even known it. She um, Peace Prophet is how she signs her work. So that is the identity that she wants to be known by professionally as an artist. I also kind of think of her, and I, this isn't my term, but this is what I've kind of heard out there on the street. She's one of the denizens of the Pedway. So she is a woman who is undomiciled. Um, she, is, uh, she has some impairments, okay? Meaning that she probably has some um, mental illnesses and is not uh, very easily approachable and does not engage directly with uh, people who, who want to speak with her, even for people who uh, patronize her. She's kind of focused on the transaction and then thank you very much and, 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 and that's kind of it. So she's, she's guarded, she's a little bit suspicious and the area, I heard a lot of questions on what uh, people were asking, where does she, um, where does she uh, live and, and work? Right in that area downtown at the Metro train, um, at the Millennium Station, when you come up from the, uh, from the station, you'll have the Cultural Center, you'll have uh, the Garland Building, you'll have Macy's uh, Department Store, and the CTA train um, at the, approximately the uh, Washington and, uh, Washington and State of Washington stop. So there's like a three or block area there, including Millennium Park, where she tends to to be found. Um, she's often seen, you know, on, in good weather, seen standing and displaying her work. She'll stand and hold a piece of her art for um, to prop her, and she doesn't um, she doesn't elicit or your your attention directly. She won't approach you and, and say, you know, excuse me, sir, here, can you give me, you know, 10, 15, 20, 40, 50 dollars for this? She won't say a word to you. She's, she's very um, quiet. She stands back and just holds the work out for passersby to see. If you spot her, if you're lucky enough and smart enough to spot her, uh, then she'd be happy for, to, for you to come and um, approach her and to purchase that piece. But she won't, she won't chase you down, that's for sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Very little is known about her. As I said, she just goes by the Peace Prophet. She's quite private and doesn't discuss anything about herself or her life. Um, she's dressed very creatively. Oftentimes she, uh, she'll uh, wear a blanket, kind of like a robe, sometimes a colorful caftan. Always multiple layers. And uh, as you may have noticed about you know people who um, live on the streets, sometimes they their what they wear is not congruent to the weather. Um, if you've ever seen anybody wearing several coats and layers of clothing in July and wondered you know wow it's too hot for that, um, she's she's one of those folks who will be wearing pretty much the same um, number of layers more or less July, October, January. So somehow she's out there. In, uh, in that weather. I first encountered her back in 2006 and quite literally I'm on my way home from the job. I work at UIC and uh, I take the, uh, the, uh, the Metro and the CTA to and from every day and one day there was this person who um, as isn't so unusual you know to be selling some of her things and Initially, my first approach with her was just to patronize a, a street artist, which I'm just automatically inclined to do. So I um, got from her this little piece, which is probably about, it's not here today, but probably about this big, and um, unlike most of her things, it was already framed, and it was done in about three shades of green. And um, it was nice, and I you know, kind of propped it up on my desk for a while, and then I continued to see her, and then I actually continued at some point to see 
her in a different way. And um, at some point after encountering her several times, I started to really feel that there was something more going on here than met the eye. And what met the eye was not really decipherable. Here we have this undomiciled person who um, clearly has a great many impairments and is you know, selling some of her artwork. Again, not so unusual. There are a lot of um, uh, artists who are outsider artists or a lot of people, unfortunately, who have challenges that um, uh, make it hard to have uh, or have unstable lives. Um, so, but I am inclined, I'm a social worker by trade, and so I am inclined to, you know, make that uh, attempt to support an artist if I have the opportunity. But her work captured me in a way that a lot of um, other art didn't and doesn't. So, and I, and I hope that if you were able to take a walk around that you would understand why. Um, as I said, she's very, very guarded. She'll, uh, she'll, she'll talk sometimes. We have this little dick, because I, I, I have known her for so long and she's familiar with me. We have this little kind of uh, dance that we do where, okay, you're my victim now. And I'll say, hi, hi, Peace Prophet, how you doing? And then she'll say, oh, I'm doing okay, how are you? I'm doing okay, how are you? And then it'll be, um, do you need anything? No, I'm all right. You sure about that? Uh-huh. Thank you, and then that's it. Then she'll physically kind of take a step back, and that literally is our little loop that we uh, go around um, over and over and over, but that's our familiarity. I have attempted to offer her material uh, goods and some relief. Do you need a blanket? No, that's all right. Can I buy you some breakfast? There's a Burger King right in the Penway. Can I get you something to eat, a cup of coffee? No, thank you. I have offered her, you know, I, I'm not an artist, so, um, you know, colored pencils, some paper that I have, markers. I've offered her some uh, materials that I just, you know, attempted to give her. No, thank you. Um, so she will not accept anything but cash. Anything but the cash. I don't know if, if she's ever um, been offered like maybe a, a gift card to go get some food, but I don't even know if she would really understand what that was. Um, but she will only accept cash, and I've tried. Um, so, and then there's the work, the work itself. Oh, good Lord, where do I start? Um, there are certain, she has a style that is her, makes her unmistakable, absolutely unmistakable. She creates this, it, this it, her, the portrait that she renders over and over again is a different iteration of the same composition over and over and over in an endless kind of stream of what I can only uh, consider a mood. What mood is she in today? There are days when she'll be like, you know, there'll be a week I'll see her and she'll have big ones and little ones and every size in between. Um, and she'll be on like a, a pink and orange streak or then she'll be on a blue and a green streak or she'll be on a purple and gold streak um, or she'll be on a you know, a uh, uh, mixed kind of uh, uh, material streak. You just never know. Um, there are certain elements in each of the canvases that are kind of, are, are most consistent across all of them. Obviously, there's the portrait kind of format. And um, always this, um, her eyes, if you'll, if you'll look, most of the time are in sideways glance where her, the, the image the, 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 is never looking directly at the viewer. She's always kind of like looking off into some side distance. So, you know, what does that suggest? You know, most of us, when we meet somebody's gaze directly, that suggests what? Trust, you know what I mean? Kind of a connection. Um, somebody in her um, kind of condition or internal state can't do that. And I think that gets projected out into her work, where even in her drawings, she keeps her eyes as askance. The, there's often uh, the eyes. There's a suggestion of some kind of mask over her eye, over the eye area, suggestive to me of 
of protection where like a, like a barrier or a boundary between her and the viewer where I want you to see this but you, I can see you but you can't see me right mm. which is I ha we have to respect that excuse me um, and and these um, images these portraits and this um, kind of stance of hers with the eyes as askance is very very consistent with how she how she is in real life I mean if you meet her you know, there is this, often this elaborate headdress, you know, and this um, manner that she has of looking aside and not meeting your eye. That is kind of what she looks like. She is African American. And, you know, in her uh, images and her portraits, she'll often, obviously, she has the very full and often deeply colored lips. Sometimes they're deep red, sometimes they're blue, sometimes they're, um, you know, uh, just in outline, but they're always, always there is one of the elements that she includes in the portrait to highlight. Um, the large hoop earrings that oftentimes she does wear, and if you look closely, and you might not have seen this, and, and, and many of them, if not all, um, there's this hand that is always right there at the foreground, like this, in this little graceful gesture, right there. Sometimes the, the, the fingers are manicured and she has little fingernails that are painted, but there's always a hand right there. Um, oftentimes this headdress of hers is the focus of the composition. You can see some of them are, I mean, she just went nuts with lotto, and, and she buys her lotto tickets, by the way. Well, she can be found, she does. There's that little, uh, um, kind of canteen at the uh, metro station, right over there by where is now the pretzel place, um, where she's often in there buying her lotto tickets. And so um, God knows which one of those was a winner. <laughs> so, but uh, um, let's see, which one has, some of them, the, the headdress is more kind of pronounced to that in others, but you know, always this explosion, sometimes it's, um, here we have one that's kind of like a, a mosaic um, with, and another that's rendered more in line. So you almost can't see it until you look closer. Um, some of them are, you know, the headdresses in uh, are a bunch of flowers. Um, some of them, you know, she'll have, uh, the hat will have, or the headdress will include a lot of tickets or um, candy wrappers, you know, any kind of thing that she can include there to make that um, embellished her materials okay. she can make art out of anything anything at some point I mean at some point she did, was just working on shirt boxes okay um, there's one item up there called Merry Christmas puppet show where it's you know a box with no top and no bottom um, that is standing up um, in the round. I have actually seen her coming out of Blick to buy her own art material and I was lucky enough to actually obtain a piece from her where she actually put it in this very Blick bag and said here thank you very much. <laughs> At the bottom of the bag was a receipt for materials in the amount of $1.68. <laughs> So, you know, she, she works mostly in, um, and I'm not an expert on art materials, if you know, John wants to jump in and correct me on anything. Um, it looks to me like gouache, tempera, pen and ink, sometimes marker. Um, she likes the metallic paints sometimes, um, you know, ephemera with the lotto tickets. Um, some, there's one up there with, it's more 3D with some felty flowers. Um, any piece of cardboard um, that she can find. Let's see what else do I see going on up there? But again, I'm not an expert in the in the materials, but that's what it looks like to me. Um, paper collage, bright hive seed. I have had a couple of that just ho like holiday wrapping papers. Um, and she works in. I have I have works that are the size of a business card. To you know that that you know, extravaganza right there, which is, I don't know what the dimensions would be, and every every dimension in between. 
Mater our materials I gather, if you buy them, there are some things that are, are considered standard sizes, right? So the posters um, that would just be standard, you know, that she would buy at the store. Um, and as I said, I've, I've attempted to just gift her with some art supplies that she wouldn't take it. Um, you know, and the color, there's just something about what she does with color in that there's a joyfulness about it. In here, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, my experience of some of the work and the things that come to my mind when I when I see her and when I look at her work. Is that you know I've you know I've been kind of a, a hang around around here you know at, at Union Street and you know I love to go to the Art Institute and I you know wonder what it must be like to be a fabulous artist and um, I I'm not I'm not an artist but I know artists and and I know that a lot of artists, you know, it's not easy to be an artist. There is a struggle, you know, to, to do your work and to, you know, get your work known and whether or not it's appreciated is something else. But a lot of artists I know struggle to keep their lives together and to make their work, right? So, um, but with her, it seemed, it, it, it's clear that all of that other stuff about struggling to pay rent, um, you know, uh, all the things that the average person struggles to achieve first before they can do what they want to do doesn't happen here. What does happen is this impulse to create that happens despite and before anything else. She doesn't live indoors. She doesn't have access to clean running water unless she, you know, finds some place to go in like a bathroom. She, you know, she, she doesn't know what she's going to eat from day to day. If she doesn't sell a painting, is she going to be able to eat from day to day? If she sleeps outdoors. She sleeps under the pedway. I've seen her out in the rain. You know, all of that, you know, those things that would terrify me if I had to face them. All of the things that other artists who struggle to make a living at, at being creative, you know, struggle with first before they can be creative. None of that happens, but the art happens. The, our, the impulse to create is so front and center with her. And I think that is the thing that really got me on the hook with her. Is that she's all about this impulse where everything else has fallen away. Everything else that would define a person's life. Where do you live? Who are you married to? You know, what are your, what are your children's accomplishments, if you have any? You know, um, all of those things that, you know, what, what have you, you know, what do you do for a living? All of those things that, that would define a life, none of it's there. But this impulse to just scratch up some stuff off the ground and arrange it in a way that makes people stop and go, wow. That's there. So that strikes me. That's my response to the Peace Prophets art. Oh, a really important thing is that, you know, we're all looking at the at the images. What isn't apparent up here is though is that on the back there's more. She, in her suspiciousness and her um, internal state, um, she there are writings on the backs of, of most, if not all, of these. And um, her writings are it's not sweet poetry. It is a lot of rambling. Um, kind of anger and warnings about things and I am going to um, she, she, she very unambiguously lists has a list of grudges and um, to wit she says and this is a quote off of one of them I forget which one a quote from her this artist form created outdoors artist title Queen Elizabeth the first watercolor vellum cardboard the peace message and delivery might be violates the tax activities of government regiment rule to assault with wiretapping sanction BMAC slash BOND slash WAYO artist dedication. Stop weapon making with the United States. Entrustment funds, acts of Congress, and with human plasmas. Native American Indian burial ground cremations say no to cellular products. So, yes, I say that's pretty good advice. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this kind of um, this kind of uh, thought stream 
is on the reverse of most, if not all, of, of the work. So if they were to be framed, it would be, you know, do it its most dignity. I've seen other works by outsider artists, a la Godi and Darger, where they're framed with two, between two panes, a sandwich between two panes of glass so that you can see both sides because there's that bonus on the other side. Um, she does have a sense of proprietar proprietariness and ownership over her work. When she signs it, she signs it, peace, profit, then she'll put the year, and then that little, what is the word for this glyph? It's a C with the circle, copyright, copyright, copyright. okay? But then, then there's that copyright glyph right next to the year. So she has a set, she knows what year it is, and then she, apparently she's paying attention to the news. Um, and uh, so, then comes to mind a couple of themes that just pop out in any discussion of this kind of, of this nature, of work of this kind of nature. So, and those big three that pop out for me are mental illness. You know, what's going on with her, we don't know. Um, I think just in my interactions with her, it's pretty clear that there's some kind of thought disorder process. Um, I, you know, I, I'm not diagnosing her, I can't do that, but could it be schizophrenia? Could it be delusional disorder? Could it be something else? I don't know, but there, there is some impairment there that um, is affecting her. We have a lot of people, you know, when I talk about her and her work, they're like, well, can't you just, you know, bring her someplace where she can get indoors? Well, I'd love to be able to do that, but um, the law says, no, people have autonomy. Um, you can't, you know, just make decisions for people. And she, you know, probably has more going on than meets the eye. You know, she, we, decisional capacity is something that, that can't be taken away from a person without adjudication. Okay, that has to be decided by a judge. And, and, and then there has to be a guardian appointed. And we don't even know enough about her life to know if that's ever happened. So um, as much as I'd like to be able to bring her someplace and maybe um, get her out of the cold for a night, I, I can't do that. She does not agree. Um, social justice. Her writings suggest that she's very aware of the social justice issues. Um, She's, uh, there's a good kind of tie-in between her work and the work down here on the first floor, which was no coincidence. Um, and, you know, she's, what has brought her and a lot of the denizens of the Pedway down there to, you know, the, this place of vulnerability? Don't know. It's complicated. The art itself and the idea of outsider art, you know, who decides um, which art has value, which art does not. Um, does she have any arts education formally? I think that, you know, maybe some other evaluator of her work would be able to spot that um, than I, and uh, I kind of don't think it matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, it all comes back to me to that creative impulse, you know, she's, um, she's just, that, that is the, it just happens where a lot of other things that would be considered baseline for other people don't. So there's that. So that's kind of all that I have. Um, I invite any um, questions or comments about this. Please, I'll open it up to the... Um, do you own all of this art? Because obviously she didn't, she couldn't communicate to say My that. My collaborator, <laughs> Mr. Fulham and I, Francis Fulham here, yes, I had, some are mine, some are his, probably roughly half and half. Um, these are things that she has been paid for. We procured them from her directly over many years. And, um, you know, any proceeds from any sales today would go directly back to her with every opportunity. Mm. So there would definitely be a a transfer right, you know, there's the supporting the gallery, you know, which this will do, and supporting her directly, which we, I would encourage any of you to do. If you spot her, please, you know, can ask her. The best way to approach her is to say hello, you know, and, you know, ask her, do you have anything available today? And maybe she'll say no, and maybe she'll say yes, and then she digs in her bag and comes up with something <laughs> that might be all crumpled and just wonderful. 